Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. Hope everyone's staying warm out there. Here we are in balmy North Texas at uh, 12 degrees above zero Fahrenheit. And uh, of course, I don't feel too bad when I was watching a football game of the Chiefs last night with, uh, you know, minus seven degrees and a stadium full of people. So I uh, can't complain. Uh, right now, the heat's working, the power's working. Uh, all's good. Okay, so right the, the video today, we're going to focus on the NASDAQ 100. We're going to look at this ETF dashboard that I show my members every week. I'm going to quickly take a look at what's going on there. Take a look at the queues. Uh, one of the key indicators I look at on a regular basis, and then just uh, take a quick look at the Magnificent 7. So tick, tick, tick is what I titled this video because I think this market is in the process of rolling over, but we need the price action to uh, to actually come through and demonstrate that it's rolling over and breaking down. Price is, price is the most important thing. Are we seeing the price action of a breakdown occurring? So let's start off here with the side-by-side -side view, the Dow and the uh, S&P and the NASDAQ 100. Dow Industrials are up 127 points this last week. So we've just been kind of pushing sideways in here. This has been, uh, you know, a little problematic here with, with the Dow. I mean, we just did not get a very strong move the previous week like we got on the S&P and the NASDAQ. Uh, so we'll see what happens. You know, it's up above that prior all-time high that occurred in, uh, you know, January of 22. Uh, the S&P 500 has not nudged above that, at least yet. It did the high this last week, did get above the high of the last week of December, though. Uh, and it was up 86.59. Uh, and you can see here's this is the, the high, the intra-week high, 4802.4. And from the October low to this intra-week high, we're up 37.5% in this move. And when we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, it was up 526.94 uh, at the close. And yeah, we've had right up here nudging right around that all-time high that was occurred in November of uh, 21. So here's the picture with the, um, the NASDAQ 100. We're going to drill in and take a look at the cues here in a second. Side by side of the industrials and the transports, the Dow transports were down 38 points. So I continue to watch this configuration here, this pattern. It looks like a possible head and shoulders pattern, but we're going to need to see this continue to trend to the downside. Now it's been down three weeks in a row. We'll see what kind of further follow through we get, but you know, it definitely caught my eye and we'll see. Uh, how this plays out. All right, let's take a look at uh, the ETF dashboard for this last week. So uh, the prior week we had five up, and I'm talking about the 16 sectors that I have in here. I know we have the standard 11 S&P 500 sectors, and I've got some subsectors and things that I put into this that I watch on a weekly basis. We had five up and 11 down. This last week we flipped 11 up and five down year to date. There are 11 sectors that are in the red uh, year to date. Now, this last week, energy is uh, the most negative, down 2.4%. So it's kind of taking up, you know, you know, it's very much like what was happening last year, right? And the same thing here with technology. Uh, technology and semiconductors up 4% uh, this last week. But year to date... Healthcare was the, because it had that surge the first week. Health healthcare is up three percent, and retail really got whacked this last week, down four point eight percent. So that's the picture there. And when we look at the index ETFs, uh, the Qs again, <laughs> like they were doing last week, because of the technology, up three point two percent. The Russell two thousand was basically flat. Everything else was positive in here, but for the year. The Russell's down 3.7%, and the S&P 500 is actually the strongest. We actually, three out of five are in the red, and the S&P is up a whopping 0.29% at the moment. So that is the picture there on the, uh, the sectors and the indices. I go into a lot of other detail on the dashboard, but I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, let's take a look at the cues.
Okay, let me drop this and go back over here. So on Friday, the queues were up 21 cents on the for the day uh, in here and up $12.81 on the week. So this is the picture. This is what we just showed you with the NDX. So let me just focus on the weekly for a minute. You can see the divergence that's occurring, okay, in the RSI. And yes, I use a 10 bar RSI. I just like it better. I think it shows me oversold, overbought uh, better than the standard 14 day. So this is the picture, pretty good divergence between you know the, the highs that were achieved uh, July, August into what's happened here since uh, November, uh, the beginning of November. And it doesn't matter which of the indicators I'm looking at, DI plus here on the directional or DI minus, we're getting divergence showing up. Now, this is weekly, so it's not going to tell you, it's not going to say, hey, it's, uh, it's getting ready to crack to, you know, tomorrow or Tuesday. It's not saying that, but it's telling you, you know, be wary. Uh, you know, and again, you know, for a wide variety of reasons why I named the, the video tick, tick, tick. The clock's ticking. The market and people are very complacent. Everybody's talking about, you know, it's kind of like this. They think that we got this Goldilocks uh, scenario here with uh, with everything. And uh, mm -mm -mm. anyway, uh, let's uh, let's drill in and take a look at the Elliott Wave picture on the queues. Okay, here we go. So right now, when we look at this, because we've pushed back so far, I, I switched to this alternate count on the queues. When this retraced 90% of this move down here from November of 21 to the low in October of 22, when we got a 90% retracement, that didn't automatically say, hey, we're in a B wave, but that was the first qualifier for this being in a B wave. Okay. And, and it, I'm talking about the bigger picture, the bigger kind of move going on here. So what I'm watching for is this B wave to end. And the B wave needs to be a three wave. If we're doing a flat from an Elliott wave perspective, we're talking about a three, three, and then a five wave move down for C. And you never really know how big a move are you going to get for C, okay? It needs to be a five-wave move. It can be impulsive. It can be a, an ending diagonal type pattern. But first things first, we need to get the completion of the B wave. And I think we're very, very close to there. I think right now I'm labeling this as a big combined zigzag W, X, Y. And the Y here is this A, B, C. So now we need the C wave to finish off, okay? And when we take a look over here, here's how I've got the C wave uh, labeled. I think we had an extended wave one. We just didn't get hardly any corrective activity in here until we got up into here. And it looks to me like this was one, two, and then we got a third wave in here, a little fourth wave, and then a small fifth wave and you know pretty strong divergence so now it looks like we're in the process of rolling over we had this snap back this last week and this was the first week of the year right in here at the end you know the end of the year and then the first week right here and then now we got this little snap back that occurred this last week so we'll see how far this wants to let you know is this going to last i mean if we push above this high then i've got to look at an alternate scenario for this I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, you got to let the market tell you, you know, you lay out a scenario and you say, well, I think this C wave has ended here. OK, so now I'm waiting for the market with the price action to confirm this scenario. And, uh, you know, I, the odds, I think, favor that when we start to look at everything. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so that is the picture there with the cues. I want to take a look at one of the indicators. We look at many, but this one was very intriguing. And this is the percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average. I've talked about this before. Let me go to this moving average view that I call this. Okay, this is a weekly view. So this is the fourth time we've been up in this zone above 80%. Okay. And the percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average. 
since in the last two years. Okay, so this is August of 22. Here's November of 22. And what's interesting with this one, and then here this is uh, August, July, the end of July and the beginning of August of uh, the last year, 23. Okay, and then here we are now. So what's interesting is two out of these last three had pretty strong downdrafts. This one here had a pretty strong three-week thrust down. Then we got this move and we got divergence because what was this? This was the February 2nd high of last year, okay, in the markets. But it wasn't confirmed by this uh, indicator right here, okay. And then we got the strong move to the downside uh, February, March with the banking crisis. Well, I call it a crisis, but, you know, we had a couple, had a few banks that got into some pretty decent, big trouble and SVB went under. So, yeah, we had this down thrust right here. This was the, you know, the end of July, beginning of August, and then we got a real strong move down to the end of October. So what are we going to get now? Who knows? Except I'm looking for, at a minimum, a multi-week uh, drop. You know, and so is it about to start? Well, we're going to watch the price action. I think we're in that zone where, yeah, that's, again, why I called that, you know, the video tick, tick. You know, the clock's ticking on this. Okay, so would you rather be bullish up here or would you rather be bullish down here? Okay, so that is the end of that indicator. Let's take a quick look at the Magnificent 7 just for perspective. So here's the 7. The interesting thing about these is Apple is clearly has broken down. You can see it not only is it below the... 21-day, uh, it's below the 55-day moving average. Uh, Tesla, same thing, is below and has been hit really, really hard here this first two weeks of the year. Uh, but the others, not quite so much yet, but there are interesting little things that are going on, like with Amazon, Alphabet, um, Meta, Microsoft. They popped above the prior high. What's going to be really, really interesting is, can you stay there? Can you, can you stay above that little prior high that occurred in December? And in here on Microsoft, it was November, November 29. Now, N NVIDIA, you know, it's, it's acting pretty strong. And it's been uh, five days above this breakout. If you draw a line across the high street here from August of last year, I mean, you got a pretty flat line in here. I'm going to say this to me looks like the strongest breakout of those, what, one, two, three, four, five. OK, but to me, these others, mm, they're a little suspect. We'll see what happens. OK, that's where we sit for this week. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. Stay warm. Be safe. And remember, the market's closed on Monday.